uh, gonna go ahead and get started. Uh, thanks for joining me on six ways to study construction details for the ARE 5.0 exams. Uh, don't forget to download my free ARE 5 project management exam study guide. It's available in the download section of my website or on my store, also on my website. And it allows you to streamline your study process, allows you to focus on what's important, track your study time, and also build confidence, learning ways to test your knowledge, and gives you ways to study the contracts, which can be very challenging for a lot of people. So why should you watch this video on construction details? So construction details are a very large part of the CE exam, uh, it's construction evaluation, and you know, if you look in the ARE 5 handbook, it actually asks you to identify um, different construction details, I think the ARE 5 handbook, the previous version that wasn't released today, <laughs> is showing, um, you know, identify what this part of a building roof is. And questions like that are going to come up on the ARE 5 exam. And also learning about construction details is very helpful in your professional practice, you know. What are you actually looking at? What are you actually drawing? Um, one of my past um, bosses, mentors, always told me you're responsible for every line that goes on the page, and I think that's very true. In architecture, you should know every line that you're putting down, every label you're putting down. You should know what you're doing because, I mean, as architects, we're responsible for that. So I think knowing about construction details is very important for that reason. Um, so let's get into it. So the first way that you can study construction details for the ARES is by reading the Building Construction Illustrated and architectural graphic standards. Um, for my recent PE, sorry, not PE, <laughs> not a professional engineer, CE, construction evaluation exam, um, I read Building Construction Illustrated religiously. And that's because I've taken CE twice. And the first time, I was completely blindsided by all the um, construction detail questions. And so when I ba went back and did it the second time, um, I was like, no, I need, I need to know this, so what are the ways that I can do that? And in the ARE 5 community, they really recommended reading these two textbooks, Building Construction Illustrated and Architectural Graphic Standards. So I focused on Building Construction Illustrated because I felt like the way it was sort of put together was very easy to read, very easy to understand. Um, the way I studied it is I basically went through and I highlighted all of the relevant passages, and I tried to you know, also highlight the relevant um, uh, specification divisions, which are also shown in there, which can be helpful, so you get familiar with how they're used on actual construction details. And I think that was one of the really great ways to cover my gaps, and even in the days leading up to the exam, that was something that I tried to make sure I went back to and checked my gaps within the, the textbook. So architectural graphic standards is also helpful, but in my um, personal experience, I've used Building Construction Illustrated a lot. Um, another great way to study construction details is through YouTube videos. I'm actually uh, planning on creating a video playlist. Um, I have my own playlist that I created for all the different CE concepts and practices that I used to recently pass my exam. So I'll be creating a playlist and sharing that on the RMSM Studio YouTube page, so you can you can actually use it and see it. Um, I think it was very helpful for me. Um, basically, anytime there's a concept in architecture I don't understand, I don't necessarily Google it first. I normally search it on YouTube first. YouTube is one of the biggest search engines in the world, so I always go and I look up a concept. If there's a ASTM test that I have no idea, it's just a bunch of numbers to me then I'm gonna go to YouTube and look up what that test actually looks like in real life. Or if there's a construction practice, like a slurry wall, it's like, okay, that sounds really interesting, what does that actually look like? So those YouTube videos really, I think, make a difference in bringing those concepts to life for you, if you're not familiar with them. And like I said with this exam, similar to practice, you know, if you're responsible for every line, every design, every detail you make, you should also hold yourself personally accountable for knowing a concept. If you see a concept you don't know, go look for it. It's your exam. You should be taking ownership of the knowledge that you get, you know? So YouTube videos were very key for me. So again, I'm gonna try 
and create a video playlist on YouTube with all the YouTube videos I searched uh, throughout my CE pass to actually um, help me through the exam and help with those concepts. Um, another useful YouTube page I followed was the CSI page. It's not directly related to construction details, but um, they actually have an entire, um, <clears throat> excuse me, playlist on construction administration. So not necessarily the construction detail bit, even though this video is supposed to be about details, but that was also very helpful for me. Um, sort of similar to Shift Harden, I'd sort of listen to it when I was driving or, you know, just on my regular days where I felt like I had time to listen. So you can listen or you can watch. So I th felt like their material is very helpful because obviously they, they work with specifications all the time. It's their job. And I felt like their videos were really helpful. So number three, only on three, of uh, Ways to Study Construction Details is the Hammer and Hand website. They actually have a best practices manual portion of their website, and they explain these details basically from the ground up. Like they'll build up the detail visually, and I feel like it really helps you understand exactly what you're looking at. And they go into waterproofing and thermal protection, which I think is a key part of this exam. It's very important. And sort of going hand in hand with that, uh, number four is to draw the details by hand. Um, so sometimes I would actually go to Hammer in Hand, look at how they'd put the detail together and actually draw what they'd done. So drawing the details by hand. What I, I wanted to do, my goal initially was to do, was to draw a detail a day. That did not happen. <laughs> But I felt like it was really helpful for me with any details I wasn't super familiar with or super confident to go and take my tablet and just draw the detail out. Just draw each of the labels, how they're layered on top of each other, each of the different uh, membranes, and all of their relationships in space. Because I felt like that really helped me understand the progression of the detail and its general layout. Okay, so number five ways to study construction details is to download real drawing sets online. Um, I don't really want to infringe on anybody's copyright by sharing out their drawings, but what I basically did is I went on Google and I searched for full bid document sets, full construction drawing sets. Um, you can find them often from um, government offices, like in terms of their procurement processes you can find you know, the full bid sets that someone submitted for like an RFP or something like that and just find the full PDF. You don't have to print it out. But um, what I really recommend doing is, you know, discussing them with your study group or even with your mentors. So that's what my, um, my study group and I did. We basically went through in one evening like a whole construction set and we looked at each drawing in detail. So we were looking at all the civil engineering drawings, electrical drawings, um, and we went and looked at every single detail that was part of that set. It's like, okay, this is how it's put together. This is what they've included. This is what they've excluded. And at a certain point, we started like critiquing people's actual details. <laughs> like, why would they actually frame it like that? So we got really comfortable with what we were looking at, and I feel like that's really critical, especially if you don't have a lot of CE experience. I feel like that can really make the difference between being like really surprised and overwhelmed when you get to the exam instead of being like, oh, I've seen this before. They did it kind of differently, but I know what it is, you know? So that, I feel like that's a really big difference and can make you a lot more confident and, you know, less nervous. If you feel like you've seen something before, you're not gonna be freaking out so much and you can see when something is obviously wrong. So yeah. Okay, so item number six, so this last one, last but not least, is to go to your own offices and find, you know, full construction or bid drawing sets and including the consultant drawing sets because, you know, within your office, you could probably find someone who's more than willing to talk about how that entire project came together. Um, I've had some experiences where I've gone to my mentors within the office and I basically just asked them to do like a sort of virtual construction site visit and explain an entire project to me. And they were very willing and very open to it. And they basically took a project from 
you know, procurement and planning and that whole review process through to the end of construction. And it took about an hour, but I, I learned a lot and there was a lot of stuff I wasn't expecting. And you also get to learn those differences between what NCARB says is best practice and how things actually work. And that sort of dialogue, both external and internal, helps you remember stuff better because you're like, okay, I'm familiar with this concept. I know how it should be applied and I know how they're applying it. So now I'll be able to see that difference in real life.